Welcome to the channel guys. Today we're going to go over how to install the Solex whole home power panel. This panel will make your life a lot easier. If you're currently using a power unit, you will no longer have to manually switch over your power units when they run out of battery. This integrates everything. So when the batteries get too low and they have no more juice to power the loads in the house, this device here will automatically switch over the load to the back to the grid again. You can also set it up so that it would be a time of use thing so that during certain times of the day when electricity is more expensive for people, it will power the house with the batteries rather than the grid. Where I'm at, we don't have that. It's a straight fee all the time. So we're just trying to maximize the solar and the battery use of this. One thing about solar panels I just wanna make sure you guys know about is the anchor system is rated for 25 amps of input and a total of 2400 watts at 60 volts max. Now, the one number that you really need to pay attention to is at 60 volts. You cannot no matter what, exceeds 60 volts. Now the, the watts and amps is a little bit more of a forgiving number. You can hook up more wattage to this and more amperage to this than what it's rated for, but within reason, right? It's like, so if you have a hair dryer that draws 13 amps and you plug it into a 15 amp outlet, it's not gonna ruin the hair dryer, right? Because the hair dryer is only gonna pull what it needs. Very similar concept with the solar on the power units. Here is my panel that we're getting power from to power this unit. And then this line here runs into the house to the sub panel on the other side of this wall. And that is where all of our critical loads will be. So as you can see, I got my CTs hooked up to my power source up on top. And it's important that you keep track of which one is line one and which one is line two, that you get the CTs on the right spot. You always wanna make sure that you're doing line one and line two are the same throughout the whole project. All right, so here is my main panel. And as you can see, it is quite a mess of wires and it's been bothering me since the day we moved in. So I'm looking forward to getting this all cleaned up. What we're gonna do is move this panel over just about, a, about an inch or so, so we got room. And then we're gonna put our sub panel right here. The sub panel is just a hair wider than this space. So we just, that's why we gotta slide this over. And then we're gonna clean up all these wires and redirect them into the sub panel. And as you can see in here, a lot of the um, labeling in here has come off. I've relabeled some of them and the stickers are peeling off. So I'm looking forward to also cleaning this up and relabeling everything so I know where everything is. The sub panel that we are going to install is another QO sub panel. I know Anchor offers a uh, Eaton sub panel, but I decided to go ahead and just buy a QO sub panel so that it matches this one. And I can just take the breakers out of here and put it in the new panel and not have to buy a bunch of new breakers. All right, so we're gonna get started on moving this stuff around and uh, I'll bring you back once we get some more progress done in this corner. Hey guys, as you can see, I got the sub panel installed. Looks a lot neater, a lot cleaner. And now, so you can see I added an extra device here. This is a generator transfer switch. And the reason I put this in is so that if there's something wrong with the anchor system or I need to change something or up update something later on down the road, I can just switch this off and then turn this on and this will bring power in from this panel here. There's a breaker that goes from here to here. You can see I covered up all the old switches. I uh, still have the generator port hooked up outside so I still have this uh, generator transfer switch hooked up here. So I moved all my circuits over to here and they're pretty well balanced. So this cord here runs the anchor system that is out in the garage. So now I'm gonna take you back out in the garage and I'll show you how we got it all wired up out there. So I've got the panel off here. You can see how I got it all wired in. Um, the one thing that I would say about the setup that I didn't like is I wish that they didn't have the ring terminals here. I wish they had the standard uh, clamps that you'd have like on the back of a breaker over here where you just need a screwdriver to screw it down. But because I don't have it, you're gonna have to get a special tool. And that is this guy right here. They're fairly inexpensive. It's just, a, it's just a hydraulic crimper. So what you'll do is you'll strip back the wire. You'll get your ring terminals right here. And then uh, just crimp the, the uh, ring terminal right on the end of the wire. I'll put a link in the description for the crimper and the terminals and anything else that I used in this project so you can find it easier. So once you get it all wired up, you wanna make sure, so we got uh, line one is black on both of them, line two is red on both of them, and I made sure that the panel back in the house is also the same way. And then you look over here, uh, line one and line two match up. 
On this panel as well, the easiest way to figure out where line one and line two is on your panel is just use a multimeter and do a continuity test to see if you got continuity between line two and line two over there. If you don't, then you got to switch the wires around. The other thing that I wish that they had a little bit different is I wish that this was a, this hole here was back here more and it was at a standard distance away from the wall as a normal panel so you could easily just run a straight pipe. I couldn't find a pipe that was um, curved like that so I had to do it this way until I find the right pipe, piping for it and we'll get it put into conduit down the road. So then CT1 and CT2 are also hooked up the same way so make sure you pay attention to which one you hook up your CTs to. There's also a arrow on the CTs you got to make sure you're going towards the grid with it. The instructions on it um, were a little bit more unclear about it but uh, but just know that the arrow's got to point towards the source, which is the grid. If you're looking for a more in-depth video on how to install this home power panel, Anchor put together a very thorough video on a step-by-step, start-to-finish, how to install the panel. I'll put a link in the description for that as well, so you can go ahead and check that out if you're looking to install this unit. All right, so I'm going to give you a quick tutorial of how the app works. Um, see, there's, they got solar panels up here. I'm guessing this is for like if you put a micro inverters with solar and you have it hooked up to your panel, you put the CTs on there, the extra set of CTs it comes with, which I have sitting here that we're not using. And I believe what that does, it says that there's enough solar coming in to power the load of the house. It'll automatically stop sending power from this unit to the panel, and it will use the power that's coming in from this solar unit instead to maximize the solar power uh, consumption. <clears throat> You'll see it's saying it's pulling zero watts from the grid. The home is pulling 589 watts from the Solex F3800, which is continually changing. There's a self-consumption mode here, which is what I have it set up on. So basically what this means is throughout the day, it's going to use 80% of the battery life just to power the loads. And then it's going to always reserve 20% of the battery life. The only way you tap into that 20% is if the, the grid power actually shuts off, then it'll automatically pull from here to power the loads. Once the grid turns back on, it'll automatically start charging this unit at maximum wattage to get it up to whatever parameter you have it set to. So like I have it set to 20%. So if I'm at 10%, after the grid turns back on, it'll charge it back up to the 20% that I have it set to. You can change this to whatever setting or whatever percent you want. If you have a lot of power failure in your area, you might want to have it set higher. Power failure in my area is pretty, um, pretty rare. It doesn't happen a whole lot. So that's why I have it set to 20%. And I also have it set to 20% because what I'm trying to do is make this thing pay for itself by collecting solar and charging the battery and using it to power my loads. So then down here it has a neat feature where you can go in and see, um, so I could see like what I've saved, CO2 savings, and then how much electricity that I've generated with the anchor system. Now my earnings are a little bit high because I had uh, mistakenly put the wrong number in and so it generated a little bit more earnings than what it should have. And then down here you could see you could choose uh, to see how much you've imported from the grid, solar, how much your house is used, and then how much battery you've used throughout the day. And then you could do by the month so you could see I've had this going for about two weeks and there isn't a whole lot of high numbers in here because we have been in a very rainy and cloudy patch for the last two weeks. And I don't think we've had a single day where we've had sun from, with no clouds at all from sun up to sundown. Looking at my solar production here, I've generated 126 kilowatts of solar power in the last two weeks. And I've used from the grid 92 kilowatts in the last two weeks. So what that tells me is if I were to get one more F3800 and extra battery, I should be able to produce more than enough to take my house off grid and not have any issues, especially because I know that the last few weeks it's been extra cloudy. So I'm looking forward to hopefully in the next few weeks or months or so, I'm going to get another F3800 and extra battery, get that hooked up, and I'll make sure to do a video to update you guys on, on that progress as well.
So if you're looking to save a little bit of money on your electric bill and also have that peace of mind of knowing that if the power does go out, that your refrigerator and freezers will stay running and that you will not lose all your meat and all your food, I would highly recommend going with the anchor setup and doing the smart home power panel as well because this thing is takes all the guesswork out of it. I can set it up, I can hook it up and walk away from it and not even think about it. With my other power generators that I've used, I was constantly having to look at my phone and check to make sure that my battery wasn't getting too low, that I was gonna lose power to everything. And so this smart home panel takes the guesswork out of everything. The switching time is also seamless. It is, does not affect the computers, it does not affect the Wi-Fi or nothing. You'd have no idea that it's switching over when it does switch over. If you don't have a solar setup yet, or you do and you're looking to upgrade, Go out and get yourself one today. I have been thoroughly impressed with all Anchor products. They're nice looking units and they perform very well. So if you like this video and you found it helpful, please hit that subscribe button down below and follow along the channel. I like to post videos every couple of weeks, different tips and tricks I do around my homestead to make my life easier. Also things to help me save money. So pound that subscribe button and like this video and we'll see you in the next one.